Yeah, Hoopus Cat, gonna go for a walk. Gonna go for a walk around Lackley Me, starting out in Gatineau. Now, what's so special about this walk, you might ask? Well, I'm starting my walk at 10.30 in the morning, and it's already 27 centigrade, which feels like 35 centigrade. And there is quite a bit of a strong breeze, so I'll be hiding from the breeze during this walk. But as soon as you actually get out of the breeze, it feels intolerable. Almost at body temperature. Body temperature about 36 to 37 centigrade. I kind of want to go that way. I don't think I can. So I'm going to try a bypass. Success because I've got to know the area, and that's important whether you're on foot, bike, or car. If you're in a new area and you don't explore it, when the unexpected happens, you have no way to go. Far too fast. I'm now going to cross the Lady Aberdeen Bridge. What happens to you when you exercise above body temperature? While you sweat, of course, you need to drink water and lots of it. I'm carrying three litres of water on me. And you really want to consider putting the water in the fridge or even in the freezer before you go out on a long walk or a hike or a bike ride on a day like this. I think the locals disagree. As do I. There's a little bit of undermining, so you have to be careful on a route like this, but to close it, daft. It's been full sunlight uh, with absolutely no breeze. The temperature's rocking it up. It's at or almost at my blood temperature. So I have to do my exercise very relaxed and keep replacing fluids. If you find yourself rationing your water, you've done wrong. You need to not be rationing, you need to be drinking plenty of it. And when you finish with a device like this, blow into it. You'd be surprised how hot this gets. So this is why they closed it. Okie dokie. Certainly you can exercise in this kind of weather, but you have to be careful. You want to wear loose, nylon clothing that allows you to sweat but doesn't stay damp. You don't want to have black on you at all. That's a bit of a black one, that's okay. You want to maximize your time in the shade and take plenty of rest. It actually is physically more arduous to walk around in conditions where it's hot like this than you might think because you're having to push the blood to the periphery much more than you normally would do so to try and cool yourself down via sweating. Drink at least every 10 to 15 minutes. It's important. If you're not sweating properly, you're going to overheat. As soon as you overheat, you lose cognitive function and muscle function. Just come here onto one of the bridges. Uh, nobody's here, of course. The homeless will not be here today. They'll be in libraries and arenas getting air conditioning. But just a question for all of you smart girls and boys. You'll notice the graffiti. Um, but how do they get the graffiti on the other ones? Answers below in the comments. Did they use a boat? I know the route fairly well and I have several places where I can actually bail and go short. It's vitally important if you're exercising any time, but especially at inclement weather, and this is inclement weather, is if you start to feel ill, if you start to feel off, stop, drink, think, and bail if you need to. It's not about being brave, it's not about pushing through. If you try and push through some things, like pushing through severe dehydration on a day like this, you can die. That's not just a scary thing to say, both Kitty and myself have nursed in the ICU several patients over their 30 year span in Toronto, which isn't that hot most of the time, who have pushed themselves so hard in races or on bicycles that they become so dehydrated by the time they get care, they're essentially brain dead. Don't be brain dead. No hats, no water, not a good idea. So that's likely me over there, and I can just go there and go around and go home, but what I'm going to do so I'm going to continue along this and take about a three mile diversion before I end up back at Lac Limi. So instead of taking the easy route, I'm going to go to Gatineau Park. We're not going to go all the way in it. I'm going to take a diversion. This is the Gatineau River pathway, otherwise known as the Centre de la Rivière Gatineau.
Remember, you're never going to fight inclement weather. If you have to be out for whatever reason and you can't continue because you don't have enough water or you're overheating or you're getting too tired, get into something like this. Get shade over your head. And if you can, dunk in the water frequently. And let body heat heat the water and evaporate to help you cool and get whatever shade you can, get whatever breeze you can. But if you're going to do a lot of dunking in water, remember one thing. Take your shoes and socks off. Keep these dry. Don't put them back on until your feet are dry. Walking around in wet socks, wet shoes, gonna give you blisters, you don't want blisters. If you go tromping through the forest, so beware of any local issues. It actually has traffic lights. Well, it felt like it was hotter than my blood, and it is. I'm sweating everywhere now. Really focusing on the drinking of the water. Touch base with Kitty, because I don't normally carry my cell phone on a walk like this, but on a day like this, I am. There's an ever-present threat, which is thunder, lightning. You want to be out there, you want to be in shelter. If you can't get shelter, make sure you're not exposed if there's a thunderstorm. So that would cause me to find likely me fast, get into shelter there and give Kitty a call to come rescue me in the car. Plenty of safe shade in there and the water if you can treat it, you've got water. But if I can't drink it, at least you can cool yourself off on it. Be wary of big rivers and lakes though. You don't want to be caught in a tidal surge. You're going to be tired and you don't want to fall in and you don't want to drown. Be cautious in water and around water. Now in inclement weather, there's going to be a lot less people around. So taking paths like this, it's not the smartest thing if you're feeling sick or if you get ill on the trail. Let's go. I've been on this before. I know it's going to take me about two kilometers, two and a half kilometers to get through it to Lac Limi. But I do know I'm going to have shade most of the way. And that's actually more important than having people around me at this point. I don't feel bad drinking, being very careful. But what about food? Numerous channels are going to tell you salted snacks, etc, etc. Yeah, but they're wrong. And let me explain why. What I want to do is I want to keep my heart rate as low as possible. Unfortunately, because it's hot and the temperature with the humidity is actually hotter than my blood, I'm having to pump a huge amount of blood through my periphery and back again as rapidly as I can in a desperate attempt to cool myself so my blood temperature doesn't rise to 38 centigrade, which is about the humidity right now. And this is going to get more and more of a significant factor as we get closer and closer to 44 centigrade humidex today. Of course I need sodium chloride salt and magnesium and a whole bunch of other things, manganese, chrome, to make my muscles function. And the sweating is going to impair that quite a bit. If you're used to sweating, you will retain much more of the salts than you otherwise would if you're not used to it. So being fit versus unfit is definitely an advantage just from a biochemical point of view. But what happens if I eat today, if I eat right now? And I do have some date bars in here. What happens? Well, what happens is the food goes into my stomach and fluid from my body is mixed with that food and muscles churn that food to try and get the nutrition out of it. I can't afford that. All of my muscles are working on two things. Moving me forward to safety, because this is an unsafe environment, and making sure I sweat as efficiently as possible. By eating salt nuts, all I'm gonna do is make myself thirsty and impair my ability to mobilize sweating. I love trails like this. We have to actually be careful. Time to have the salty stuff is in the evening when you hold up somewhere and you're getting as much shade as possible and you're waiting for the sun to go down and you have adequate water. That's the time to be taking the salt, your peanuts, etc. on board to replace what you lost by sweating. During the day, during the exercise, be really careful. A lot of runners, a lot of triathletes, a lot of bicyclists actually will take sodium chloride, which is common salt tablets, uh, during endurance exercise in extreme heat, thinking it's helping them. And to some degree, if you practice with it, it works. Uh, I never had to do that, and I ran 50 miles in conditions hotter than this. But you might need to. But the time to practice taking added salt on board during exercise is not when it's for real, not in a race. Um, not if everything has failed and you have to go from A to B today even though you don't want to because it's unsafe to stay in A. Just taking the salt tablets because somebody takes them or you've seen them recommended or you think they're a good idea without knowing what it's going to do to you physiologically is a really bad idea. Notice I'm walking a lot slower than I normally do. 
Well, I'm almost out of the shock, and that's great. And I'm going to be heading towards civilization by going around Lackley Me. And I do encourage you to follow me. This is practice for a bug out, but it's also practice for working when it's too hot, when I need to and I can't just not work. It's also fun, and it's also finding out stuff about yourself you may not know. I did a two hour walk yesterday. It wasn't quite as hot as this, but it was pretty hot. Onwards. So I've popped up here on what is a closed road. Oh, probably didn't see that, but that was a raccoon. Knowing your area, knowing whatever area you're in, well enough to navigate on foot and at night, and you want to practice that, but not when it's hot like this. There's always going to be a good idea. Paper maps are really, really important. Looking at Google Earth really, really helps, but this road is invisible on both of those sources. The only reason I know this road's here is because I actually stumbled across it when I was exploring. I was here about three days ago, somebody has smashed that and broken it, so you can drive a vehicle up here. Interesting. I had to go this way when I came because of the barrier. We're now back at Lac Limi, and we can do our full tour of it. They do seem to close us down. We'll have to play clever. So... Let us see. They really close us down. There's always a way. As ever, safety first, try not to uh, trespass. You know, and make sure you have a good cover story and use as much of the truth as possible. I was looking for some birds behind the back of the Plenier Centre. I stumbled into the forest. I thought, oh, I better get back to the trail. I headed south this way, stumbled out of the forest after a while into the trail. Didn't see any signs, didn't see any barriers, sorry. Now, if you're in North Korea, United States of America, that's not gonna work, so bear that in mind. For reference, boys and girls, that's the Hilton in Gatineau, Quebec, and the casino, whole casino, is right there as well. This, is why this entire stretch has been closed because they're putting in new walls here, and yeah, I really don't know why they bother closing it, but they do things like that. That's Lackley Me, and there's hardly any boats out on a day like today. You'd expect a ton of them, but it's so hot, uh, it's kind of stopping people doing anything. <sighs> How hot is it? I'm feeling hot. Well, I'm absolutely drenched, which is nothing unusual for me, but I think anybody would be drenched. So I'm at the halfway point of Lackley Me, but I've gone way past the halfway point of my walk, so I'm going to head home. And there's a turtle. This site doesn't mention pedestrians, strangely enough. Even the Canadian geese are taking it easy. So I've gone about 1.2 kilometres, it's just under a mile from where I went in the forest to do this trail. So I'm currently on the uh, Lackley Me pathway. And you might be fooled into thinking you can go there to get to Lackley Me. And you'd be very much wrong. So all of these rocks will protect the shoreline from the motorboats that people use on Lackley Me occasionally. But it really screws up the turtles and other wildlife getting access to the water and then into the forest what's left of it behind. So this is the beach and that's the swimming area right there. But of course some people are having fun. Of course I'm going in. Well, I can assure you, having water all over my body and then letting it evaporate is absolutely delicious. Um, of course, you have to do it pretty frequently. You don't want to be doing this with fresh water, your water supply. Uh, people do that all the time. You'll see on movies, people throw their water into their hand, put it on the head. That helps a lot. But if it's fresh, potable, drinkable water, drink it. It's only about 29. It hasn't actually got up to 33 uh, centigrade yet. So I don't know if it will by the time I head home. Like I say, I'm a little concerned. I won't be out here really late in the afternoon in case we get a thunderstorm. Taking the time to let my feet dry. Because if I put my socks on, they will be wet. And shoes get wet, socks get wet, you get blisters. Speaking of which, most of the time, if you want to do a walk like this in the heat, you want to smear yourself in Vaseline anywhere where you're going to have skin to skin contact. Because of the salt secretion on the skin, because of the sweating, the clothing also is going to get wet. You're going to be high risk from blisters, so use some Vaseline. 
I'll keep an eye on the fact that you are sweating and you need to keep sweating. Conditions like this, if you stop sweating, that's a medical emergency. Get indoors, get cold, even if you have to lie in a pool of cold water, cool the core temperature down, hydrate. Before sweating tells me I'm badly hydrated, there's another key indicator, one of the first ones. I suggest you use it. Been out about two and a half hours, drinking a fair amount, still hydrated. Urine, plenty of it, frequently, and it's clear. Well, it's currently 31 centigrade, but it feels a little hotter. It feels like 41 centigrade. Been out in this for three hours, so I've had a good workout. Didn't run out of water, but it came close. I would say you need at least one litre of water per hour, and I would actually add one to two litres for the total distance on top of that. And you need to be able to get extra water. I didn't see any water fountains on my walk, but there is one or two of them, and I could have found them if I wanted them. Failing that, fill up a pack of water, throw some tabs in it, wait two to four hours, and then you can drink all you like. The other thing I did for this walk, because of the abnormal heat we're having for the next few days, actually for the next week, uh, my iPad died and it's been showing signs of death for a while. So I've lost my ability to use the, my iPad, which means no YouTube interactions under my account because I do not use a phone for any of this stuff. So I will be back at home and using the computer and back on my account on the 1st of July. So that's why I went silent for a while in June. And you're probably wondering what happened, and maybe you're not. But consumption of products, especially of gasoline and plastics, is what is actually causing the weather I'm experiencing today. And there's no two ways around it. Cutting consumption however you can is absolutely essential to helping mitigate the rise in temperatures we're all going to be suffering through for the next decade or more. So stay cool. Doodles. This has been a 2024 Wolfie Terrier production.